بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى ونفعنا الله تعالى به لا يحتاج إلى شيء ليس كمثله شيء وهو الصميع البصير الإمام الطحاوي رحمه الله states لا يحتاج إلى شيء that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is not in need of a thing ليس كمثله شيء وهو الصميع البصير there is nothing similar to him yet he is all hearing and all seeing the meaning of this verse which is from Surah Tushura ليس كمثله شيء there is nothing like him this verse negates any similarity of Allah سبحانه وتعالى to creation and the verse is decisive, muhkam, meaning all mutashabih verses, verses which, are, which have multiple interpretations, are interpreted in light of muhkam, decisive verses. So any verse in the Quran which is mutashabih, has multiple interpretations, will always be interpreted in light of those verses which are muhkam, decisive. This verse would be considered muhkam, decisive, in negating any similarity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to creation. Regarding kamithlihi, this, uh, the meaning of this could be like the likeness of him. Laysa kamithlihi, there is not like the likeness of him anything. And some have translated this as there is nothing like him. They, the first group said that the meaning of the ka the letter ka is in the meaning of mithlu. So the meaning would be laysa mithlu mithlihi shay'un. There is not like the likeness of his likeness anything. And if we take the ka to be an additional ka, ka za'idah, the meaning would be there is nothing like him. The second meaning which is there is nothing like him would be very clear. That there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would the first meaning be? There is nothing like the likeness of him. How does this negate the likeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to creation? How does this negate this? They state regarding this that this is more emphatic in negation, in negation of or in negating likeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to creation. If someone states regarding um, a leader, they say, مثل الأمير لا يفعل كذا. مثل الأمير لا يفعل كذا. Someone like the leader does not do this. When they say this regarding the leader, they are not affirming a likeness of the leader. They are negating any likeness. مثل الأمير. So in the same way, when someone states, like the likeness of Allah, there is nothing. It would not only negate the likeness to Allah, it will negate the likeness of the likeness of Allah. Both will be negated. Someone should not misunderstand this and think a likeness to the likeness is being made, but there can be something like Allah. No, because in that, if, in that case, the meaning would be there is something like the likeness of Allah, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, which would be nonsensical. But the real meaning here is that there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But double emphasis, double emphasis uh, reinforces this actual point. The, like the likeness of Allah, the likeness of the likeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing. Meaning there is nothing absolutely like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way or form. Now this verse is commonly quoted along with the verse in Surah Al-Ikhlas. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ There is no, uh, there is nothing similar to him. لَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ both of these verses negate any similarity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to creation. And this is one of the main 
understandings of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah that we do not liken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to creation in any way or form. Any word which has been related regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the outward meaning of which is resemblance to creation, is interpreted in the light of this verse, which is a muhkam decisive verse. So we negate the, the similarity to creation. So when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing and all seeing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Inna huwa samil basir, that surely he is all hearing and all seeing. And in this verse, Laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa samil basir, yet he is all hearing and all seeing. This affirmation of all hearing and all seeing is a negation of body parts, a negation of appendages, a negation of limbs, a negation of any instruments. And this will come later again in the Tahawi Creed. This point, Al Imam Al Tahawi will re emphasize this exact same point. Another meaning which a Dasuqi, a Dasuqi Rahmullah Ahmad, a Dasuqi is the, uh, oh, he has a commentary on. Sanusiya, he mentions another point that the meaning of this verse, uh, the word mithlu, can be two things. One is the point that we just mentioned this is a negation of uh, anything being similar to, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being totally negated, and the second meaning is negation of any similarity to. A that and a sifat, meaning the divine existence and the divine attributes, being negated in any way or form. After this, the author states, خَلَقَ الْخَلْقَ بِعِلْمِهِ وَقَدَّرَ لَهُمْ أَقْدَارًا وَضَرَبَ لَهُمْ آجَالًا خَلَقَ الْخَلْقَ بِعِلْمِهِ That he created crea- everything in creation with his knowledge, with divine knowledge, meaning everything we see and observe around us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he did not have the divine attribute of knowledge, nothing would exist. Why? Because everything around us, when we observe the known universe, we observe perfection. Okay, this term perfection is commonly used when discussing with atheists, and atheists tend to point at points in creation saying there is some imperfection in certain aspects of creation. For instance, they will mention the problem of evil and they will mention uh, some aspects of design or flaws in design. This is one of the main points that atheists use. But when we use this uh, teleological argument, pointing out the perfection or the design in creation, what in fact we mean by this is an overall perfection. Overall perfection meaning the earth is able to contain life. And there is design, obvious design, in the universe. Of course, in Western uh, philosophy, they've had the debate uh, from the Scottish philosopher David Hume and uh, William Paley. William Paley taking the position of the theists and David Hume refuting him even though uh, David Hume actually refuted these points prior to William Paley even writing down his points. This is how they present uh, these arguments in A-levels. But when someone goes and reads the works of or the work of William Paley, they will realize the examples William Paley may have used were flawed. But the essence of the arguments, the substance of the arguments remains. The examples given by him scientific, were scientifically flawed because science with progress showed otherwise. But the substance of those arguments was not flawed and to this day has not been refuted even by David Hume himself. So what they mention is that there is an outward imperfection in some aspects of creation. How we respond to this point is that the overall observation of the universe, we know that there is design, there is a a creator, 
this is very clear from observing creation but also the similitude of someone who negates a designer is the similitude of someone who walks into a building notices that the building is structured in a good way the walls are fine and then observes that there is a carpet there is a, a speakers in the building uh, like this building a masjid and we'll observe the ceiling and then we'll see an, a nail in the wall and we'll say this building is fine but why what purpose does this nail have what purpose does this nail have this is this example of those people who attempt to find flaws with creation what will they do they will look at creation and find some things which do not make sense to them like vestigial organs or other things and they will attempt to say that this disproves the existence of a divine creator but in reality when a person observes the known universe the entire known universe they will realize that there is intelligence behind the creation of humanity and everything around us this is the meaning of khalaq al khalq bi ilmihi that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created creation with his divine knowledge meaning with his divine attribute of knowledge if there was no knowledge and divine will behind the very existence of creation then creation would cease to exist because anything created without knowledge would be haphazard random and chaotic but when we observe the known universe we do not see random behavior we do not see chaos around us qaddara lahum aqdaran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportion for them aqdar aqdar here would mean good and evil everyone was created and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportion for everyone aqdar which is a portion of something portion of what either good or bad every creature shall taste some good and some bad some will so uh, what some of the uh, arifin gnostics what they mention regarding this abdullah al haddad rahimallah who is um, his full name is abdullah bin alawi bin ahmed al haddad al husaini al yamani rahimallah ta'ala who is who passed away in the year 1132 and is considered one of the revivers of islam he states that everyone is created with to either be with the da'iratur rahma which is the circle of mercy or they will have da'iratul hikma the circle of wisdom one of the two Da'iratu rahma is when a person lives on earth in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no illnesses with good sustenance lives a long life very few things uh, that are painful happen and they pass away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase them in fadl in virtue in the hereafter But then there is also da'iratul hikma the circle of wisdom where a person may have to face hardship a person may have to suffer a person may have to face difficulty this da'iratul hikma this circle of wisdom in the hereafter a person will see the divine justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this will not be counted as injustice meaning what people perceive as the problem of evil on earth and attempt to explain the problem of evil this is known as theodicy attempting to explain the problem of evil why evil exists in the hereafter people will see the divine justice that behind every action that occurred behind everything that happened there was divine wisdom so here the author states qaddara lahum aqdaran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created good and evil 
good and evil exists amongst his creation. And also, وَدَّرَبَ لَهُمْ آجَالًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed for them ajal. Ajal is plural of ajal, which is appointed times. What this means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allotted rizq, sustenance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given age. And people do not eat the sustenance of someone else. Meaning, whatever morsel reaches your mouth, this was written for you. And a person does not die at the appointed time of someone else. If the appointed time is for someone else, another person will not die except the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has will to die. In this case, there is a refutation and the Mu'tazila sect. The Mu'tazila held the view that haram earnings cannot, haram, um, unlawful earnings cannot be considered rizq, sustenance. They said unlawful earnings are not considered risk. Risk is only lawful earnings. So the author is refuting them by saying that everything a person, remember the word risk is whatever a person consumes by wearing clothes or by eating, consuming or any other ways of usage. This is considered risk. The Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a state. <coughs> That in all these cases, the risk is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether the risk is attained through lawful means or unlawful means. Their school was that they believed that a person has risk in his sustenance is that which he possesses. Whether he benefits from it or not. That which he attains and earns from halal earnings, permissible earnings, is his risk. While the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a, their position was whatever the person consumes, whatever the person uses, is his risk. And irrelevant to whether the person earned those, uh, those, uh, that risk through lawful or unlawful means. Now, the Mu'tazila also had another view. Which was, if a person kills another person, then the murderer has disrupted the appointed time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a Mu'tazili belief. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had determined that this person will pass away at the age of 73 at this particular time, but a murderer comes along and kills him at the age of 63, the Mu'tazila believed that this was a disruption of the appointed time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Ahl sunnati wal Jama'ah refuted this view. They said, the position of Ahl sunnati wal Jama'ah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates means. And by those means, certain things are carried out. Not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of means. Meaning the murderer can take a knife and stab a person but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed that the person will not die, then his life will not be taken away. Even if they severed the head, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that the soul stays in the body, the soul shall stay in the body. So the murderer carries out the action through what we know as kasab. Kasab is earning the action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in human beings ikhtiyar choice to carry out certain actions they carry out those actions but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that the effect of those actions shall not take place then the effect cannot take place so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a curing effect in certain medicines this is asbab means a person eats the medicine and feels good but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the effect from the medicine, then the medicine will not be able to soothe that individual. Now, this position of the Mu'tazila is in contradiction to Al-Qur'anul Kareem. How in Al-Qur'anul Kareem, for instance, 
In Surah Sayyidina Hud السلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا That there is no creature that crawls on the earth في الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا Except its sustenance is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يستقدمون, which means that if the appointed time comes, they will not be delayed. لا يستأخرون ساعة even by an hour. And ولا يستقدمون they shall not precede the hour. So these kind of concepts which we find also amongst Catholics, and that Catholics uh, may have a concept that the devil controls the evil on earth and God Almighty controls good on earth or other religious groups that may believe in the God of light and the God of darkness. This does not exist in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has proportioned everything for creation and has placed for them appointed times. The author states, لَمْ يَخْفَ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ مِنْ أَفْعَالِهِمْ قَبْلَ إِنْ يَخْلُقَهُمْ وَعَلِمَ مَا هُمْ عَامِلُونَ قَبْلَ إِنْ يَخْلُقَهُمْ That nothing was vague. لَمْ يَخْفَ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ Upon him, meaning upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, شَيْءٌ meaning anything, مِنْ أَفْعَالِهِمْ From their actions, قَبْلَ أَنْ خَلَقَهُمْ Prior to creating them. What is this relating to? This is relating to the divine knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sifatul ilm. And people ask this question that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what we will do, does this denote a jabr, meaning a compulsion? The answer is no. That the divine attribute of ilm is a sifatul kashifatu. Uh, an attribute which unveils, an attribute which unveils, it is not uh, an attribute which forces something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing what we will do does not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has compelled us to do those things. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in us free will with his divine knowledge. He subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what actions we shall do. Whatever we shall carry out, he knows. Prior to creating creation, he knows their actions. وَأَمَرَهُمْ بِطَاعَتِهِ After creating them and knowing what actions they will do. Some people ask, why did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just place us in paradise or hellfire? If he knew what actions we will do, the response to this is that in that case, you would be in hellfire for having done nothing. The person was given the choice, freedom of choice to carry out and was only tasked after the person became an adult and had maturity, had intellect. And after that the person chose evil, then a person shall be punished. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish a person based upon his divine knowledge. Allah, by choice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish human beings based upon his divine knowledge of what they will do but he does punish people uh, uh, or jinn after they choose to carry out those actions. So after they carry out the actions, then he subhanahu wa ta'ala may punish them or may forgive them. وَأَمَرَهُمْ بِطَاعَتِهِ He ordered them to obey him. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered creation through messengers Ali salatu wa salam to obey him. وَنَهَاهُمْ عَنْ مَعْسِيَتِهِ And he forbade them from disobedience. Ma'asiyah. Ma'asiyah is disobedience. After creation is made, creation has a choice. Once they become mukallaf, they have intellect, health, and the, the message of Islam reaches them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders them to obey and forbids them from Wrong actions, ma'asiyah. When a human being chooses 
to carry out something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows what choice he will make. He, him knowing what choice they will make is not a compulsion of their choice. They have free will to carry out uh, whatever action they would want. وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ يَجْرِي بِقُدْرَاتِهِ وَمَشِيئَتِهِ This passage means, and everything runs, meaning everything in the known universe, بِقُدْرَاتِهِ with his divine power, وَمَشِيئَتِهِ and his divine will. Now, this aspect of belief is what confused the Jabariya sect. Those who believe that we are compelled to do everything. They said everything is be mashiatillah with the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore our sins are in accordance with the divine will. But the response to this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having mashia, divine will, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all our actions. This does not negate free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ in Surah Al-Ra'ad, verse 16, He is the creator of everything. Khaliqu kulli shay, Meaning, the actions of humanity also. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَخَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَقَدَّرَهُ تَقْدِيرًا That He created everything. خَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَقَدَّرَهُ تَقْدِيرًا He proportioned it. Meaning everything. فَقَدَّرَهُ تَقْدِيرًا Giving it a portion time meaning uh, an amount of time to live on earth, amount of time to do actions, an amount of uh, risk, sustenance, and other things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'amaloon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you, meaning entire creation, wa ma ta'amaloon, and what you do. So the meaning of Mashiatullah is. <clears throat> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates our actions. This is the meaning of when we say insha'Allah, if Allah willing. What do we mean? In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, لا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا إن يشاء الله. Do not say regarding anything that I will do it tomorrow except that Allah wills. What does this mean? If a person intends tomorrow to travel to another city, he goes outside to start his car, but the car is not starting. He realizes the engine is not working. So he decides to catch a train. When he decides to catch a train, the train is late and delayed and will not come. Then he goes to a coach station. The coach station is closed. He hires a taxi, but none of the taxi bases are, are available. He phones different people, no one is available. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cut off all the means for the person to reach this city. He has attempted, but he is unable to reach the city. Or he may even fall ill and be totally unable to reach the other city because he has fallen ill. This is why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not willed this to happen. This is the meaning of Insha'Allah, if Allah wills, it does not negate the free will of a human being. The human being with his free will will attempt, but the means of carrying out that action are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for something to happen, the author states, وَمَشِيئَتُهُ تَنْفُذُ That his divine will is carried out. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for something to happen, that thing will take place. Again, this doesn't negate free uh, will or free actions of human beings. وَلَا مَشِيئَةَ لِلْعِبَادِ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ لَهُمْ There is no will for human beings except what Allah subhanahu wa for creation, except what He has willed for them. In Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ It is not what you will, but what Allah wills. What is the meaning of this? Meaning your will is a will which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for you, and He can remove at any time. With this free will, you are able to carry out and earn actions. And only then, you can earn those actions in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For instance, 
a young man leaves the home intending to commit fornication, a bad action. He goes outside and he goes to a brothel. The brothel turns him away. He intends to do zina, finding a, a person who can reciprocate this action, yet he runs into someone else who turns him away from this action, takes him to another place. This young man intended to do a bad action. He intended to use his will to commit a bad action, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will for that action to take place. So, he would fall under وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءَ Allah. It is not what you will, except what Allah wills for you. But at the same time, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the action to take place, the action has taken place with the will of the person himself. Because by choice, he has gone out and the means were there. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the action. Having the will does not negate the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of those actions. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the cause and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the effect. The author states, فَمَا شَاءَ لَهُمْ كَانَ Whatever he wills for them will take place. وَمَا لَمْ يَشَاءَ لَمْ يَكُنْ Whatever he has not will will not take place. Meaning, what is on the servants is to intend and to carry out, to earn the action. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not willed, the action will not take place. A man wakes up in the morning intending to pray his dawn prayer, fajr prayer. His sleep overwhelms him and he misses the prayer. Is the person sinful? The response is, if the person was a direct cause of the sleep overwhelming him, then he is sinful. How? A man stays awake throughout the night purposefully until an hour from Fajr time and goes to sleep. Now he is sinful. Because he has himself carried out the action by which he is unable now to wake up because he has kept himself awake and fallen asleep just before Fajr time. Or another man wakes up at Fajr time, has the willpower to get up, but refuses to get up because of laziness and goes to sleep. He is also sinful. The only exclusion of this rule is a man who slept on time, intending to pray Fajr, placed his alarm clock on and the clock went off and he did not wake up, genuinely did not wake up. This person is excused and must perform Qada. All three, in all three cases they must perform Qada, but only one category of these people is excused. The one who did not, did not carry out the means of missing the Fajr prayer. In the same way, a man wakes up for Fajr prayer intending to go to the congregation. He goes outside and he realizes he must take out the rubbish, otherwise the rubbish man will miss taking the rubbish. So he goes and takes out the rubbish. He intends to walk to the masjid. Afterwards, when he goes, he sees someone in distress, he helps them and he misses the congregation. Now the person is rewarded, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will for him to get to the congregation. This is the meaning of insha'Allah. The author links this to the next statement, which is Yahdi man yasha'u wa ya'asimu wa yu'afi man yasha'u fadlan wa yudillu man yasha'u wa yakhzulu wa yabtali adlan. This uh, sentence uh, would mean he guides men to goodness whom, whom he will, wills and he protects and repels on behalf of anyone, whoever he wills, out of his favor, and he misguides whom he wills, وَيُضِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ and يَخْذُلُ disgraces or abandons, وَيَبْتَلِي and trials adlan out of his justice. This, inshallah, we will cover next week. But the question here people have is, 
When we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, does this negate the choice from the servant? Is the choice negated? Meaning, those who are disbelieving, are they forced to disbelieve? When we say Allah has misguided them, what do we mean by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having misguided them? And when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided certain people, what do we mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided them? But have they made the choice for guidance? Also, some people ask the question, um, if you are born in a Muslim home, then you have not made the choice of guidance, yet you are born in a Muslim home. And a person who is born in a non-Muslim home, he has not made the choice of misguidance. These questions, inshallah, we will tackle next week. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to carry out the class next week. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ma hu ahluh. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ma hu ahluh. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ma hu ahluh. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.